Well, with a ceasefire on the horizon, many Israelis are against the move and don't feel that Israel's security can be restored with such a deal. This is despite the fact that it is not a permanent ceasefire. Here to discuss the pros and cons is Brigadier General Amir Avivi, the chairman and founder of the IDSF. Brigadier General, thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to start by getting your opinion on this ceasefire deal. Is this something that's good for Israel, or is Israel's hand being forced by the U.S. and other partners? Well, I think that's only time will tell. And uh, I think really the issue is, is it going to be different from 2006, from the 1701 resolution? We saw that the international community in Lebanon were not able to impose on Hezbollah the resolution, and the Hezbollah grew exponentially with 150,000 rockets and massive presence on Israeli border with the Iraqi forces endangering the whole north. This is a reality Israel cannot return to. And, and I think there is an understanding overall in the government, in the army, that it's not an option to be in this place. We have managed to degrade Hezbollah dramatically destroying most of their leadership capabilities, uh, most of their leadership also on the tactical level. And now we need to make sure that they are dismantled in South Lebanon and also that they cannot renew uh, their capabilities north of the Litani in uh, Lebanon overall. We need to be able to impose it. So if the agreement is really going to enable Israel to be proactive, if we see Hezbollah trying to build itself again, then it might be a good deal. But if we we'll go back to what we saw in the past, this is going to be a big problem. Now, we are getting information. Uh, it was reported that there will be a ceasefire at 10 p.m. today of some kind. Do you know anything about what guarantees are being spoken about in the ceasefire deal? I mean, you emphasize it would only be a good deal if Israel has the ability to enforce it. Would they? Is that what's being discussed right now? <laughs> Well, I think that this is the one point that Israel insisted on. And that Israel demanded from the U.S. that it will be clear that if the international community and the Lebanese army are not able to really push Hezbollah out of South Lebanon, are not able to make sure that Hezbollah cannot rebuild itself, if they don't do the job, Israel will do the job. And this is the most important thing for, for Israeli society and, and I think overall for, for the government to make sure that we are able to impose the reality where Hezbollah cannot rebuild itself again. This is the most crucial thing. Now, a, a huge part of the UN Resolution 1701, which you mentioned, as well as 1559, I mean, these are resolutions passed by the UN Security Council itself, and yet they still have not been able to disarm Hezbollah, which was a stated part of these resolutions. Is this even on the table? I mean, we're talking about pushing back Hezbollah to the other side of the Litani. Who's talking about disarming Hezbollah? This is a key component to having peace in the region. Is it even on the agenda? So 1559 is about disarming all the militias in Lebanon, including Hezbollah. 1701 is an extension of 1559. It's not instead of that. And 1559 is still out there. I mean, the demand to dismantle the militias is there. Now, how do we get the Lebanese emboldened enough and motivated enough? And how do we get the international community engaged enough to really dismantle Hezbollah as a military uh, terror entity, it's a challenge. It's not easy. And, and I think that this connects to another issue, which is Iran. I think that if there is one thing that Israel is counting on, is being able to really convince the next administration that we need to hit the head of the snake. The head of the snake is Iran. It needs to be dealt militarily with an airstrike, a major strike or two or three, whatever is needed to dismantle all these uh, nuclear sites and military sites and really bring down the Shia axis. Attacking Iran can make a change also in Lebanon, in Iraq, in places where Iran is exercising its control. I think it should be a strategic goal of the U.S. and Israel to take Iran out of Lebanon and other areas and really build a alliance and a Western Israeli moderate Sunni alliance 
that will attract also countries like Lebanon or Iraq into this regional global alliance on the Sunni Western side and not on the Iranian side. So there is definitely a lot to gain by dealing with Iran. And this is a part of the whole strategic uh, picture. It's not just about Lebanon. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time. But I want to thank you, Brigadier General, for joining us today and for shedding some light on this situation. Thank you very much.